Hi folks, Dr. McMacken here, back with you again. Today I just wanted to hop on and talk for a few minutes about um, a podcast that recently came out. Um, I've been on a number of other uh, podcasts to talk about my book, Our God Loves Justice, and about Helmut Goldwitzer, the subject of that book. And um, I'll put those links in the uh, video description down below, but this is the first time I, that I'm aware of that folks on a podcast or a group of folks on a website or uh, in any other context have gotten together to talk about uh, Our God Loves Justice and Helmut Goldwitzer and my work on him uh, without me being a direct part of the conversation. And that's just really, really cool to see Goldwitzer's uh, life and thought take on a bit of a life of its own and extend uh, into the conversation beyond places that I'm directly involved. So it's really great to see that. And it's great to see it happen on a podcast called Sancta Colloquia um, between uh, the host of the podcast, Reverend Lauren Larkin, and uh, Sabrina Peters, who I've gotten to know a little bit from Twitter uh, over the past couple years. And it's, it's really neat that uh, these two uh, women theologians have picked up the subject of Goldfitzer's work and they're extending it in inter interesting ways, in ways that never would have occurred to me um, in, in many cases. And so that's just a really neat uh, contribution that I think they're making. So the purpose of this video uh, is to just use my social network to the extent that I can to draw more attention to this podcast episode that's out there and to bring these two uh, uh, real interesting thinkers uh, who are engaging with Goldwitzer uh, to your attention so that you can follow them and benefit from their work as I have. So I'm just trying to you know, boost the profile of that a little bit by hopping on here. And so what I'd like to do is just make a few comments of things that occurred to me as I listened to them talk about Goldwitzer and uh, just go with that and uh, share that with you and extend the conversation. So um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting was that Sabrina said that she read Our God Loves Justice right after reading David Congdon's The God Who Saves. And that's exactly how you should do it. Uh, that's the best case scenario. David and I have been working closely together for a long time. Uh, I, I would have to actually stop and count the number of years, but it wasn't long after the turn of the millennium. Um, we met in college and uh, got to know each other and began working on theological subjects together. And, and we're kind of uh, part of this revival project, so to speak, for dialectical theology. And so if you're looking for a real good introduction uh, to dialectical theology and why it, uh, at least some people think it's interesting and important today, you could do a lot worse than just reading his The God Who Saves and My Our God Loves Justice back to back. So well done, Sabrina, for, uh, for that approach. It's exactly the right one. And if anybody out there is interested in learning more about dialectical theology, we do have uh, the Society for Dialectical Theology that uh, you are welcome to join up with. Um, I'll put a link in the description uh, so that you can join that mailing list and be part of that uh, community. We're still trying to get it off the ground. Uh, the next thing we're doing, as we're planning right now, is having a meeting at the upcoming uh, Society for Biblical Literature and American Academy of Religion conference in San Diego in November. Uh, so uh, get signed up to the uh, mailing list and you'll hear all about that as it comes down the line. And just in this connection, uh, to say to Lauren, the host of the podcast, uh, she has not yet read The God Who Saves, uh, which is a cardinal sin and she should feel ashamed of herself and go read it very, very soon. All right. Um, Sabrina said in the podcast that she picked up Our God Loves Justice uh, not for the dialectical theology angle, uh, primarily, but uh, primarily because she's become interested in the intersection of Christianity and socialism. And there is quite a bit about that in the book. It was one of uh, Helmut Goldwitzer's primary preoccupations. And in fact, I translated and included in that book a set of theses uh, that Goldwitzer wrote in the early 1980s called Why Am I, as a Christian, a Socialist? And so that's one of the things I like most about that book is I was able to include a couple of texts from Goldwitzer himself and get those out to people in English because I find his uh, modes of thought really compelling. Of course, I must. I wrote a book about him uh, and that's why. But Goldwitzer talks about the true socialism of the kingdom of God as this receding horizon that calls all human attempts at community uh, out of itself and forward into better and increasingly uh, just iterations. And so the kingdom of God's true socialism is that receding horizon. And then we have all of our different ways that we enact community in this life that are judged and measured according to the 
quote unquote direction and line that the true socialism of the kingdom of God uh, provides. And Goldwitzer uses that direction and line language quite a bit. He gets it from Karl Barth. Uh, and so you see the tie in there with uh, names that we recognize uh, for dialectical theology. So uh, that's a big part of the book. So uh, I hope Sabrina found it. Uh, it sounds like she found it helpful in her own thinking. But one of the things that uh, Sabrina and Lauren do uh, with the book is to shift some of the terms a bit, and they talk a lot about what it means to be embodied and what it means to do theology from a position that's embodied and to do theology uh, in a way that speaks to human beings as embodied uh, rather than just like disembodied heads or intellects or things like that. And one of the points that um, comes up that I found really compelling is Sabrina appeals to the Epistle of James uh, to say that this whole phrase that we have floating around in our culture today as a response to tragedy, the whole idea that, you know, one's thoughts and prayers are with uh, the victims of tragedy. And she says that the Epistle of James makes really clear that if you're offering thoughts and prayers without actually changing material conditions, you're doing it wrong. Um, and I found that, that connection had not occurred to me. I absolutely love it. So uh, thank you, Sabrina, for that contribution. Uh, go hear exactly how uh, she plays it out. But this ties into some things in the book uh, that I discuss in connection with Goldbitzer, specifically the spirituality of the church, which is this uh, widespread idea that we have in the United States that the church is somehow about the spiritual, and that's uh, very strictly disconnected from the material or the political or the social, uh, apart from what happens just in your little congregation. Uh, so the more I think we can chip away at this idea of the spirituality of the church so that we can recognize the claims that the gospel makes on us to construct as just a society as possible, the better. And of course, remember, uh, the God that Christians serve is a God who loves justice. And uh, neglecting this, of course, simply maintains and reinforces the status quo. And a big piece of that status quo is uh, capitalism, as Sabrina points out. And again, that's why some Christians throughout the years have become very interested in socialism. Uh, another point that they bring up is the, the material in the book on charity and philanthro capitalism, which was some of the most interesting uh, stuff that I, for myself personally, that I wrote in that book. It was uh, new to me when I first uh, started thinking about it in that connection. And in fact, the place that I first encountered philanthropic capitalism, and this is a little bit of a strange tangent, I get to teach uh, some really interesting stuff um, yeah, as part of a religious studies program. And then I also teach in interdisciplinary studies. But years ago, we used to have a J term, a January term, which was a three week intensive. And it lent itself to professors teaching on strange, odd topics. Uh, that would connect with students or that they were really passionate about. In one year, I, it was actually the last time we had J-Term, last time I taught it, I did a class on the band U2. And in connection with U2, I was uh, researching a bit into their charitable work, and I found these criticisms of it. Uh, and it's a discussion of this thing called philanthrocapitalism, where you wed together philanthropy and capitalist uh, mechanisms. And that really got me thinking. And um, I took that and uh, ruminated on it and put it in conversation with Goldwitzer and, and threw it in the book. So uh, I'm really happy that uh, that was something that jumped out at Lauren and Sabrina. And uh, they reflect in there on how difficult it is to find ways to embody in our everyday lives uh, some of these new values that we come to as uh, we think about uh, the God who loves justice and that um, it's not all just about revolution with a capital R, big picture. It can be about the little revolutions that happen daily in our own lives, the way that we choose uh, to, um, to embody our faith. And, uh, of course, the million-dollar question is, how should we do this? And it's a, it's a question that each of us needs to answer. If anybody came up with the answer to that question, uh, they'd become insanely rich. Uh, and of course, uh, if you're thinking from a Christian socialist perspective, that'd be a bad thing anyway. So uh, I think the goal of this is, is it's, it's, it's not about giving answers that are going to, that's going to fit everybody. It, it's every individual having to struggle with it and come up with what's the next step for them. And um, I know that I personally always feel as though I lag behind on these things. And, and it, it takes a lot to, um, and in, in a very real sense, is uh, sacrifice certain of the privileges that we have 
in contemporary American society, especially if you're like me and you're a white dude, we've got just lots and lots and lots of privilege. Goldfitzer says at one point, I quoted in the book, he says, uh, the thing for Christians, the thing that Christians have to do is uh, work against the status quo to the extent that it starts cutting into their privilege. And he also talks about giving so much that it hurts uh, your own privilege. And um, it hurts. And it's a difficult uh, process. It's a, uh, a very theological, spiritual, religious process, whichever word you want. And um, as our uh, VP of HR at my uh, institution says, it's a journey. We're all on a journey with this stuff. And it's, it's much more important to struggle with that honestly and come up with some um, even small changes to make to your own life. It's much more important to do that than it is to get on Twitter or on Facebook or whatever you use to express yourself and uh, virtue posture, as uh, Lauren and Sabrina talk about in the podcast. So I applaud them for uh, struggling with that tough question. Another thing they bring up that just uh, would not have occurred to me, and this is why it's so great to have more people engaged in the conversation, is thinking about um, how patriarchal structures are embodied in society in ways that are uh, harmful. And uh, she brings up a number of things in connection with medicine and pain management, especially uh, the way that um, the medical field is, uh, embodies patriarchal structures that perhaps, or that don't, I don't want to say perhaps, or that don't uh, take seriously the way that women report pain and, and uh, don't treat them as um, the sort of self-determining individuals that we should be treating them as. And then Lauren brings in um, some really interesting uh, discussions of our society's approach to both birth and death uh, that are definitely worth listening to. So I don't want to go on too much about that because I don't have that personal experience. They've got it nailed. Uh, I found the reflections really, really helpful. So I'm just going to tell you to go listen to that. So those are some thoughts that I had in listening to that podcast. I really, really enjoyed it. Of course, many, many, many thanks to Lauren and Sabrina uh, for putting that podcast together and discussing my work on Goldwitzer. And I thank you especially for the contributions that you made to the conversation. I hope that more people listen to it. So that's all for now.